I'm Luca Fortini from Fluence. Let's wait some minutes. There's still people joining the, the meeting. They, our webinar is focused on anaerobic digestion for industries. Let's wait, uh, there are still some people logging in. Okay, I think that we can start. So welcome again, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this webinar on Fluence. Today we will uh, uh, talk about uh, anaerobic digestion and particularly uh, anaerobic digestion for uh, food and beverage industry. I am Luca Fortini and I'm part of sales, uh, uh, Fluence Italy sales department. Now I will introduce you our company. So uh, this is the agenda of today's webinar. Uh, we will start with the short introduction of Fluence and Fluence Italy. Then we will describe uh, uh, why anaerobic digestion is uh, a good choice and what it is, anaerobic digestion. Uh, we will review some application for food industry and the technologies that Fluence uh, is proposing for, this, for these industries, then some case studies. And uh, in the end, we will have uh, uh, some time open for question and answers. And uh, uh, there will be also um, my colleague, our Sales, uh, sales uh, manager, uh, Alessandro Donà, uh, joining us for the Q&A. So, Fluence Corporation is a worldwide company uh, based in White Plains, uh, USA, uh, close to New York. Then uh, we have uh, operating offices uh, all around the world. China, Argentina, Brazil, Israel, USA, and Italy, Padua, where, where is located. Then uh, uh, Fluence has uh, regional offices, uh, mainly uh, commercial uh, uh, business unit, uh, also in Australia, in Philippines, in Mexico, and in Brazil. Uh, Fluence Italy and Fluence Corporation, uh, are, uh, is a company uh, offering uh, um, water technologies and water solutions, starting from primary water treatment, desalination, and uh, uh, wastewater, both municipal and uh, industrial uh, wastewater. Speaking about Fluence Italy, uh, as was saying we are located in Padua, uh, in the north of Italy, not so far from Venice, and uh, uh, we offer solutions. We are the business unit mainly involved in uh, water treatment and wastewater treatment for uh, industries. Uh, speaking of wastewater treatment uh, for industries, we, we also offer anaerobic digestion uh, solutions and this is the topic that we will uh, we will discuss and describe today and uh, then um, sorry i have to move to my mobile and um, mm, yeah this is what we offer then we have also some uh, some treatment 
particular treatment for food and beverage industries uh, like uh, uh, wineries and juice. I would like to here this one for the so waste to energy solutions uh, are for us. Uh, we propose a waste to energy solutions as a win-win proposition. Uh, there are many benefits related to waste to energy solutions. Uh, first of all, there is the, the on-site production of energy. Uh, so uh, the, the customer can use the, the biogas produced through anaerobic digestion for the production of electricity and uh, thermal uh, and thermal energy. Uh, anaerobic digestion uh, helps in, uh, in obtaining, in treating uh, wastewater in order to meet uh, the, the most, uh, the most uh, uh, strict requirements of the charge. Uh, with anaerobic digestion, we have a, a, very, a very high reduction in uh, sludge, in sludge uh, production, up to 90%. So this is very important because sludge, sludge disposal, it's a significant cost for wastewater treatment. Then we have a high quality digestate coming, coming from uh, the anaerobic digestion. There is a, re a strong reduction in greenhouse emission, greenhouse gas emission, and uh, waste, waste to energy. Anaerobic digestion is uh, a, a well-known technology, 100% uh, reliable, and uh, in our vision in our design we try to propose a uh, very very stable and reliable plant so with low operation and low maintenance required. focusing on food and beverage industry uh, first of all we have to say that of course most of you maybe already know that uh, anaerobic digestion is not only for food and beverage industry. This is our topic, our focus for today, but uh, maybe some of you already know uh, anaerobic digestion for, for example, in uh, agricultural uh, field. Uh, uh, but Fluence Italy is very, very focused and uh, has a strong background in industrial wastewater treatment and in applying uh, anaerobic treatment to industrial wastewater treatment. So when, when and for which kind of industry could be interesting uh, anaerobic digestion? Uh, one example is uh, company, are companies uh, with fats and proteins as main pollutants, for example, slaughterhouse, fishery uh, companies, dairy companies, and uh, most of these companies uh, can use a DAF, a flotator, uh, the solid air flotation system, to reduce the polluting load uh, on the on the um, on the uh, wastewater treatment plant, and this uh, and this produces a lot of primary sludge. Another another uh, another kind of company uh, that can be uh, interested in uh, anaerobic digestion solutions. Uh, are the, 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 the companies with uh, soluble COD in wastewater, like sugar and starches, uh, as the soft drinks producers, so the food processing companies, the gems and the, and the, the, the gems and the third producers, breweries. In this, in this uh, kind of industries, wastewater treatment plant, can have a problem of bulking, uh, mostly uh, that comes from this uh, kind of pollutants. And uh, bulking, sludge bulking, is a problem that uh, in the end uh, gives a problem in sludge setting. So uh, a difficulty in, in the wastewater treatment plant management. We propose an Arabic digestion for this kind of, of Companies and uh, the although uh, anaerobic digestion is uh, perceived as very expensive, and 
uh, as I was saying before, is mostly uh, connected to cogeneration and or biomethane production. This is a part of the business, let's say, but uh, in our vision, in our idea, uh, uh, the proposal of anaerobic digestion treatment, anaerobic uh, uh, solutions, is a part of uh, wastewater treatment that gives also uh, the production of biogas. So, uh, speaking of uh, food and beverage industries, uh, we, uh, the, the, the ideal treatment for this kind of industries is uh, to, to offer a uh, wastewater treatment plant that uh, gives the, the opportunity to the company to be compliant with the legal requirements, legal limits, discharge, for, for the discharge to the environment also, produce the, the minimum uh, potential quantity of sludge, so avoid costs for disposal or reduce costs for disposal, and uh, recover the maximum uh, amount of energy. And this, uh, maybe you are familiar with that, but uh, usually wastewater treatment plant, if we uh, are talking about aerobic uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, we don't recover energy. We only uh, spend energy, so we have only a cost. So wastewater treatment is, uh, in the end, it, it, it comes a cost for the, for the company. Uh, through anaerobic digestion, we are reducing that, that cost. Uh, some examples, main, let's say, one advantage of uh, the anaerobic treatment uh, solution, as I was saying, is sludge reduction. We have three different examples here. The first one is uh, a slow house. As an example, with 1,000 cubic meter uh, per day of uh, wastewater, uh, uh, COD load, COD concentration of 4,200 milligram per liter. Uh, uh, using a uh, traditional, let's say, uh, a waste, an, aerob an aerobic wastewater treatment without anaerobic digestion, uh, the plant will produce uh, nearly. Uh, 8.5 uh, 8 tons per day of primary sludge and 1.4 uh, tons per day of secondary sludge. Uh, thanks to the anaerobic digestion uh, applied to both primary and secondary sludge, this is very important. We, we could, uh, uh, let's say, add to the same aerobic wastewater treatment plant, uh, anaerobic treatment plant, anaerobic digestion. Uh, section that would uh, treat both primary and secondary sludge. The final production, the final uh, overall production of the plant would be 3.25 tons per day. So uh, nearly 65 uh, 65% less than before. Then the second example is the dairy industry. Uh, also in this case, you can see uh, 1,500 cubic meter per day with 2,800 per liter of COD. Uh, primary sludge production 5.3, secondary sludge 3.6 tons per day. Applying wastewater treatment with anaerobic digestion, uh, the final result result is 4.2, so nearly uh, more than a half uh, of reduction. Of course, this different reduction. Uh, depends on the uh, characteristics of the of the wastewater. Uh, in slaughter houses, we have a wastewater uh, very rich in uh, fats, uh, and uh, so if we uh, usually uh, the, the primary sludge uh, is very rich and uh, is also the, the main part of the sludge production. So, uh, and it's also then easily converted into biogas uh, into the uh, anaerobic uh, reactor. Then the last one, uh, 840 cubic meter per day with uh, 
COD of 5,000 milligram per liter, a gem production company. Uh, in this case, uh, we are not uh, talking about uh, fats and, uh, and uh, uh, grease uh, that we can remove through primary treatment. So you don't have primary sludge, you only have also with uh, aerobic, only with aerobic treatment, you, you have only a secondary sludge. Uh, thanks to the anaerobic digestion, uh, in the end, we have only 2.1 uh, tons per day of digested sludge. So, let's go on. So, 66% less than the solution without anaerobic digestion. Uh, in as um, di the, 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 the direct connection with the, the previous slide is that anaerobic treatment can be used as a, an optimization of uh, the wastewater treatment process, uh, also of a wastewater existing wastewater treatment plant. For example, uh, we can use it uh, as an improvement of an existing aerobic, aerobic activated sludge plant. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, the, 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 sub, the, the, the pollutants responsible of sludge bulking, uh, for example, fats and sugar, uh, are uh, removed from the system because they go, uh, they are the, the food for the anaerobic, anaerobic bacteria and uh, they become biogas. So, uh, in the end, uh, the aerobic treatment will not be, will not treat those, those pollutants or will treat less uh, concentration of those pollutants. And sludge bulking is one of the pro main problems in uh, aerobic uh, activated sludge uh, wastewater treatment management. Uh, another point is that the uh, digested sludge is uh, uh, well stabilized and also uh, slightly putrescible. And uh, um, so this means that it doesn't smell. Uh, and uh, uh, while, while at the same time, uh, the aerobic sludge, both primary or secondary, uh, is uh, not so, so well stabilized and uh, it, it, uh, it is a source of odor on the plants, on the wastewater treatment plants. Then uh, it can be combined in uh, uh, an existing aerobic plant, as I was saying, and uh, the two processes uh, are, are complementary, not alternative. This is very important to underline. Uh, we are not saying uh, use only anaerobic treatment and stop using aerobic treatment. The two solutions are very st are strictly connected one to the other, and uh, can be combined to to help uh, a, a proper uh, wastewater treatment for uh, an industry. So uh, the, pro the 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 result of uh, anaerobic treatment is a bio is biogas. Biogas, uh, I have to say th something about biogas. Biogas is a uh, uh, gas produced by the anaerobic uh, uh, bacteria that we find in the sector and is mainly made of uh, uh, CH4, of methane, uh, from 50 to 60 percent. Uh, the concentration of methane is from 50 to 70 percent. And uh, the remaining part is mainly CO2. Uh, it can be used uh, directly in factory boilers. Uh, we can use biogas directly uh, in existing boilers as it is, or also in mixture with uh, natural gas. Um, there are there is only uh, there are only minor adaptation uh, to the boiler burner, and this can be used uh, and this. Uh, gives the possibility to the, to the company, to the industry, uh, to produce uh, thermal energy for, uh, for internal use. Otherwise, uh, the biogas can be used in a, in a CHP, 
in a cogenerator, in an engine, to be converted in electrical and thermal energy. And it can be used inside the industry or the electrical energy could be also uh, injected into the public electrical net. Otherwise, and this is a theme very interesting in Italy and is also uh, as is also developing developing uh, in uh, other countries. Uh, there's the possibility to uh, upgrade biogas to biomethane. Uh, as I was saying, biogas biogas is mainly uh, made of methane, but there are pollutants like CO2, like gas and uh, uh, ammonia and so on uh, it can be used it can be used uh, in for, ve for vehicles uh, or uh, injected into the national network uh, but it, it has to be pre-treated it has to be uh, upgraded upgraded to biomethane uh, and this means uh, uh, reaching 98 percent of methane content in the, in the gas so removal of all the pollutants like CO2 and other minor pollutants of the biogas. <clears throat> uh, here we can see the, the, the solutions that Fluence is offering uh, for anaerobic treatment and uh, the different solution for each kind of industry, which is the right anaerobic treatment for each industry. Uh, the first one on the left, anaerobic digester, uh, digestion with CSTR reactor, so continuous flow steel tank reactor. This is a very um, usual, let's say, uh, uh, aerobic, anaerobic uh, reactor. Um, in Italy, we have a lot of these kind of reactors also in agricultural uh, biogas plants. And uh, it's a, a, a tank with a complete uh, mixing uh, system without recirculation. Is uh, suitable for primary sludge, secondary sludge, solid organic byproducts from vegetables and animals. And typically, the, the COD concentration of the incoming uh, mixture is uh, 150,000 milligram per liter. Uh, this means that this kind of solution is very interesting for meat and fish industry and also, as I was saying before, in uh, pig and cattle farms, so in agricultural field. Another uh, solution is uh, anaerobic digestion with sludge concentration. Uh, the reactor is uh, also in this case is a CSTR reactor, so similar to the, the first one and uh, but with the biomass recirculation that uh, allows the increase of biomass anaerobic active biomass concentration uh, into the reactor and uh, this allows uh, a, a higher uh, efficiency and uh, a reduction in also in the volume of the of the reactor uh, this is a solution um, suitable and very interesting for primary sludge and uh, wastewater or liquid byproducts with low solids content. Typically, uh, the, the, the incoming mixture has a um, concentration higher than 40,000 milligram per liter. And this, this kind of, of uh, solution is very interesting for dairy industry and confectionery industry. Uh, the last one, uh, anaerobic digestion with granular sludge, EFC, so external, for, external forced recirculation uh, reactor. This kind of reactor is uh, uh, basically um, using a granular, granular anaerobic sludge and uh, uh, as, as, a, as the name says, as an external recirculation system to maintain the correct mixing into the reactor. And uh, it is used directly on wastewater, or uh, better, it is used on wastewater uh, after uh, pretreatment for solid removal. 
but anyway, it is used on wastewater uh, for um, that have uh, uh, that has uh, that have a, a um, COD content, soluble COD content, mainly given by sugar, starches, and so on, with at least a concentration of 2,000 milligram per liter. Typical application is uh, soft drink production companies, confectionery industry, breweries, and also not in the least, but also paper mills. Uh, an overview of a potential uh, combination of anaerobic and aerobic treatment, as there was as we uh, already saw, we can have byproducts. So sometimes also uh, biomass pretreatment, and this kind of byproducts can go after pretreatment into the uh, anaerobic reactor. Um, I give you an example. Uh, we have a company um, slaughterhouse, uh, chicken slaughterhouse here in Italy that is also using breading waste coming from uh, ready meal production uh, that after a pretreatment goes into the reactor. Then we have wastewater. We can have a primary uh, treatment like flotation to recover primary sludge. Then the, the floated sludge, the floated can go into the uh, anaerobic uh, reactor while the clarified water goes to the aerobic treatment, the refining treatment if we for example if we have to go into uh, discharge into environment then uh, sometimes uh, there's a line missing in here uh, wastewater as i was saying before after a primary treatment different from flotation can go directly into the anaerobic reactor we have biogas production biogas can go to uh, CHP, boilers, and uh, or be upgraded to biomethane. The outcoming pro product from the, uh, from the anaerobic treatment uh, is a digestate. If mainly if we speak, if we are speaking of uh, CSTR uh, reactor, then we will need a uh, centrifugation, uh, a dewatering system that can be a bit simpler. And we will have a dried, uh, dewatered sludge that can go disposal or to the fields. It depends on the on also the local on the local uh, regulation. While the liquid fraction coming from the dewatering can go uh, to our aerobic treatment. Otherwise, if we speak of uh, uh, speaking of uh, EFC reactor, so we are speaking of uh, soluble uh, COD treatment. The outcoming, uh, the outcoming uh, digestate, it will be uh, treated water that could be discharged into uh, sewerage or uh, discharged to a refining uh, aerobic, uh, tre aerobic wastewater treatment plant. All this combination, all these factors, uh, the, the result of all this combination of this scheme is uh, that we can, um, from the combination of aerobic and anaerobic treatment, we uh, reduce the operating costs, we uh, have a low environmental impact. Uh, as I was saying, we have uh, very, uh, it's a well-known technology. Anaerobic treatment is a well-known technology, and Fluence has more than 20 years of experience in uh, proposing anaerobic solutions to, uh, to food and beverage industry, and not only to industry. Uh, it is suitable for different types of wastewater byproducts, and it's uh, very, very useful and very uh, efficient. Uh, in for plant retrofitting and the, the important things thing is that the plant retrofitting uh, is not affecting uh, the, the production side the, the, the production line so uh, no problems for the for the core activity of the company let's let's uh, see some of 
our case studies. This is the first one. Uh, this is a dairy company located in the north of Italy. Um, we have mozzarella, ricotta, butter, and cheese production. Uh, in this case, we have a CSTR reactor with a, a sludge concentration. The, the reactor is working, as you, as you see down here, is working mainly with Otway. Otway is the uh, byproduct coming from ricotta cheese production, and uh, also primary sludge uh, from a flotator uh, coming from the wastewater, the aerobic wastewater. Otway is a byproduct with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, potential uh, reuse mainly for uh, the, 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 um, the livestock uh, the livestock uh, companies uh, but it's not always always easy for these uh, uh, dairy companies to get rid of it so uh, many companies uh, we have already some experience and references in dairy, in dairy companies are looking for this solution, for anaerobic solution, to uh, solve a problem related to the disposal of hot whey or also whey and other byproducts coming from the, from the production from the production line. Uh, in this case, the, the reactor is uh, made of, there is a two, an error on the, on the on the slide, but there is one uh, digester with a volume of 1,200 cubic meter, and this digester is used for both for uh, cogeneration, so for uh, CHP, and also for thermal thermal energy production to feed uh, a sludge dryer in order to reduce the amount of sludge uh, to be disposed of. Anyway, from 147 tons per day, uh, mainly of hot whey and a small part of, part of floating sludge, we have a production of 2,720 cubic meter per day of methane, not biogas. Uh, in this case, I'm referring to methane. So in terms of biogas, it will be, let's say, nearly the double, 5,300, 200. And uh, the potential, uh, the, the production, potential production uh, of this methane is down here. This is by CHP, and this both from CHP and boiler, used for the, the sludge dryer. Another example: uh, uh, fish processing industry located in Ecuador, Eurofish. Uh, in this case, we uh, developed a complete solution starting from primary treatment with a flotator, a DAF, uh, then treatment of clarified water in a double stage nitrification, denitrification aerobic plant. Uh, the primary sludge goes to this anaerobic reactor right here. And uh, uh, then we have, uh, of course, uh, downstream the aerobic treatment. We have a final clarification of treated water. We have a high production of biogas and um, a significant reduction of, of sludge volume to be disposed of. Uh, for the company, it was a very good uh, investment, a, a very interesting investment, I would say, because they while they are compliant with discharge limits, uh, they reduced uh, the, the primary sludge uh, up to 75% because this primary sludge now becomes biogas. And they reduced from, let's say, 25 and 30% uh, of energy consumption because they are exploiting the uh, biogas produce, produced by the anaerobic reactor for the for the uh, for the production side for the, the uh, production line, and the result is a saving of 
380,000 uh, dollars per year. So not bad, I would say. Another one is uh, a slaughterhouse in Italy, a uh, meat processing company uh, coming uh, as slaughterhouse of chicken slaughterhouse. Uh, the, the treatment is very similar uh, as the one that we propose Eurofish. Uh, let's say Eurofish comes after this one, but the, the water treatment is similar. So we have a primary treatment with a flotator, then anaerobic digestion. Uh, for production of thermal and electrical energy through a CHP, sludge dewatering and nitrification, the nitrification system, both on the clarified water coming from the PAF and also from the, the liquid fraction coming from the sludge dewatering, the digested dewatering. Uh, the capacity is 3,000 uh, cubic meter per day with an average COD content of 5,000 milligram per liter, 5,200 milligram per liter. The final discharge is to environment, so uh, compliant with the Italian limit that is 160 milligram per liter of COD. The methane production is 6,300 cubic meter per day, methane, uh, equal to 22,900 kilowatt hour of electricity per day. Last one, uh, this is an interesting uh, case study uh, because in this case we have a combination of uh, both uh, anaerobic uh, reactor uh, solution. So we, uh, this is a sweet production company in north of Italy, close to Milan. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, we have a primary treatment for uh, fats removal uh, from the wastewater and the and the uh, sludge, the primary sludge that is removed through removed through uh, the flotator goes to a CSTR anaerobic reactor. Then the uh, clarified effluent has still uh, uh, a very interesting, I would say interesting for us, interesting COD content, uh, but mainly soluble uh, related to the sugars that from the feed production. So the clarified water goes to uh, an EFC anaerobic reactor. Then we have biogas exploitation for thermal energy production for boiler, sludge watering for the outcoming digest state of the CSTR reactor, and uh, a final a refining uh, nitrification denitrification system with a final clarifier that in this case is another DAF, DAF, uh, for space space requirements, I would say, uh, and final discharge into environment. So from 600 uh, cubic meter per day of wastewater with an average, average COD content of 10,000 milligram per liter with 40% uh, consisting of uh, soluble COD, we have a methane production of 1,500 cubic meter per day and a thermal energy production of 13,500 kilowatt hour per day. This only with wastewater treatment. Okay, so uh, I hope that the, the, the introduction to our solution was interesting. Uh, I we have time for questions and answers. Uh, maybe let me go through some, some questions that were made. Uh, Alessandro Donà, our sales, uh, uh, our sales manager, is also uh, available for uh, Q&A here with, with us. So, uh, is there biological uptake of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus during anaerobic digestion? Well, uh, partially, but uh, not, not uh, significant. Uh, I would say there is an uptake biological due to the uh, bacteria growth into the anaerobic reactor, but the anaerobic treatment is 
eff effective uh, on the COD. So this is why uh, we often have to combine uh, anaerobic treatment with aerobic treatment. Uh, aerobic treatment gives us the, the possibility to uh, complete COD removal and mainly to remove nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, this is what happens, for example, in uh, slaughter houses, in chicken slaughter houses, where we uh, combine uh, anaerobic and aerobic treatment, and aerobic treatment has mainly the function of nitrogen removal, both coming from wastewater and also from the digested out coming from the anaerobic reactor. Uh, okay, so um, there is some limitation in the content of nitrogen and fat so that an influent can be treated in an USB. Well, USB, uh, it's something, uh, let's say, uh, speaking of uh, fluent solutions is uh, the EFC reactor in our case. Uh, there are limitations mostly uh, related to the solids content and uh, so also the fats I would say because uh, the, the, and this is why for example in, the, in this case we uh, treat the wastewater with a rotator for fats removal and the, fat re the fats don't go uh, into the uh, EFC reactor but they go into the uh, into the CSTR reactor as a sludge, and the, the EFC reactor uh, is treating only soluble pollutants. Nitrogen content uh, is not, uh, let's say, a problem, but of course, it, it could be uh, a point also to, uh, to, to the final discharge uh, limit, let's say because it's not, it won't be reduced into, uh, in, in, in the anaerobic reactor. Let me go through again. Alessandro, uh, of course, you are free to answer other, other uh, answer questions if you see something that comes to your attention. Yes, thanks. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, nitrogen could be a problem only if we overcome the limit of uh, three gram per liter. 3,000 milligram per liter. Uh, but this is an issue only for, uh, for example, uh, meat byproduct. In this case, we, ha we have to study other system in order to load this uh, nitrogen content. But uh, generally speaking, nitrogen is not a, a big problem. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about quantity of digested sludge, pro sludge production, maybe I guess related to the slide where I was uh, describing the sludge reduction. Does the quantity include primary and secondary? Yes, uh, as I was saying, the CSTR reactor uh, is always, uh, we, we always design CSTR reactor to uh, treat both primary and secondary, although secondary is not the main source of biogas because it's not so uh, interesting in terms of biogas production, but uh, it is anyway, it gives anyway biogas and it is anyway stabilized into the reactor. So, uh, the CSTR reactor is designed to treat both primary and secondary. So this means that in the end, we have only one sludge, one outcoming sludge, the digestate, and then the dewatered or the, or the dried digestate uh, to, be, to get rid of. And in uh, significant, uh, significant uh, re with a significant reduction in quantity because uh, the, the anaerobic uh, sludge, the anaerobic bacteria growth is more or less 
one tenth uh, compared to aerobic uh, bacteria growth. So uh, this is why we have this strong reduction. Uh, how many kilowatt hour will be generated from each cubic meter of biogas? Uh, well, the, the calculation is very simple. Let's say, well, how many kilowatt hour? It depends, of course, on the efficiency of the of the uh, equipment that will uh, use that that biogas. Um, this uh, the, the 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 CHP usually has a forty percent of of yield electrical uh, electrical uh, in electrical energy production and each cubic meter of biogas uh, is made of 50 70 percent of methane and uh, each cubic meter of methane uh, is as a, a certain um, um, energy production so uh, this is uh, it depends on the concentration of methane in the biogas, and it depends on the uh, kind of final uh, final user user of the biogas. If we speak of CHP, it's more or less 40% of the energy potential energy generated by a, a cubic meter of methane. Roughly, so uh, one cubic meter of biogas will generate uh, more or less two electric kilowatt if the biogas is 50% methane and 50% carbon dioxide. If the biogas is richer in methane, let's say 70%, one cubic meter of biogas is more or less equal to three kilowatt hour of electric power. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. Uh, well, I, I'm going through the, the, the question and there are a lot of questions. Uh, if we don't answer to all the questions, don't worry, you can write me uh, and I will leave you, I will give you the, the, my, my contacts. And uh, anyway, uh, how much is the cost of building a digester, a digester for wastewater of ice cream manufacturing plant, 1000 cubic meter per day and so on? Uh, of course, I cannot answer on uh, live on how much is a cost of a buy of, a, of building a digester, but uh, and then connecting to another question uh, regarding return of investment. Uh, what we see in our without incentives from uh, friction for electricity production or for, or for biomethane production. Uh, this kind of plants have a return of investment, a payback of three, four, five years, thanks to the sludge reduction, thanks to the energy production, thanks to the reduction in uh, operating costs uh, related to uh, the aerobic treatment because if we are treating um, the, the main uh, the main part the main COD uh, content uh, load coming to the to the wastewater treatment plant, we are treating it into an uh, anaerobic reactor, and we are converting it into uh, uh, biogas. So this means that compared to a solution without uh, an aerobic treatment, all the all that COD load would go to the aerobic treatment, meaning uh, more energy for aeration to the uh, oxidation tank. And this is the most uh, expensive part of uh, aerobic treatment, one of the most for sure, meaning more sludge production. So of course, this is very connected to local costs, costs for disposal of sludge, costs for energy, but our experience is that in three, four years, we uh, have a return of investment of this kind of plant. Then uh, let me go through again. There is a question also related to uh, meat and uh, beef, uh, um, uh, meat, meat, beef and pork uh, uh, processing. Uh, I was speaking, I was talking about 
chicken slaughter houses, the same uh, scheme, the same kind of treatment can be used also for uh, beef and pork uh, uh, slaughter houses. We are now uh, completing, uh, we are close to the, to the startup or the commissioning and the startup of uh, uh, meat uh, beef uh, slaughter house in Argentina. And uh, the, the, in that case, using in the CSTR reactor, the sludge, the primary sludge coming from wastewater treatment. And in that case, also byproducts coming from uh, the, the, the slaughterhouse itself. So um, not, not good to hear, but uh, dead, dead animals and so on. Uh, what is... Okay, Alessandro. Uh, well, the, the range, uh, what is the range of design SRT to, uh, used for anaerobic digesters for various food and beverage effluents? Uh, this depends on the kind of anaerobic digester. Uh, the, uh, let's say the retention time for an EFC uh, reactor is uh, hours in terms of hours. So 20, 40 hours. Uh, the, the retention time of, CSTR, of a CSTR reactor is in terms of days, 20, 30, or even more uh, days. We can give an indication. Sorry. Oh, sorry, go on, go on. We can uh, give an indication in terms of uh, uh, specific COD load. So yeah. COD uh, per day per cubic meter. For the CSTR and uh, recirculation digester, we can give as an indication from four to seven kilograms of COD per cubic meter per day. For the AFC reactor, uh, the average applied COD load, specific COD load is from uh, 10 to 16 kilograms of COD per cubic meter per day. Okay, so I'm going through again. Uh, sorry. Well, what is the methane content uh, in the biogas produced? Uh, as we were saying, it's from 50 to 70 percent, depending on the kind of uh, wastewater and byproducts treated in the, in the reactor. Uh, what is the biogas production for the sludge of the DF or of the Eurofish company? Well, uh, primary sludge uh, usually has a 50, 60,000 milligram per liter uh, of COD content. So, uh, if uh, Alessandro, if you want to help me in the calculation, but. Yeah, uh, is more or less. Uh, Every tons of flotate give uh, about 50 cubic meter of methane. In biogas, is uh, since the biogas is 70% uh, of methane, uh, 75 cubic meter of biogas every ton of flotate. <clears throat> okay, so uh, installation of shrimp processing plants. Uh, not yet, but we had several contacts, mainly in Ecuador. Uh, okay. Uh, any experience of anaerobic MBR? Uh, well, uh, experience uh, not at full scale. Uh, we didn't show you any any of that. We we tested into our in our lab. And it's one opportunity, one one potential opportunity, but not not uh, full scale scale experience right now. Anaerobic suitable anaerobic solution are suitable for distilleries. Do you have any distillery case study? Uh, yes, anaerobic solutions are suitable for distilleries, um, but as fluence, we don't have any uh, case study 
for the for the moment. We tested uh, and we worked on several project uh, feasibility study, and we tested also uh, distilleries effluents in our in our lab. But yeah, there are a lot of distilleries with anaerobic uh, anaerobic plants. Um, I'm going through. Uh, what's the typical COD removal rate by anaerobic digestion? Uh, well, it depends on the on the kind of of when uh, of, mm, of of inlet into the anaerobic reactor. Uh, it can be up to ninety percent. Uh, mainly, if we speak of uh, uh, EFC reactor, so of soluble COD, ninety and also more. Uh, if we are speaking of sludge, uh, secondary sludge uh, is like 50% because it's uh, uh, COD not easily uh, not easily convertible convertible from the uh, anaerobic bacteria. And let me go through. Alessandro, if you see the, the, the questions, you can answer to pick one and you can answer. Yeah. Uh, Interesting for you. Uh, we have already talked about MBR. Uh, regarding the uh, distilleries uh, in, the, uh, in the 80s in Italy, uh, more than uh, there was several anaerobic plants that uh, uh, has been built so uh, anaerobic is very suitable to the distilleries just to uh, conclude this uh, topic uh, other uh, <coughs> one question is how <coughs> do we uh, develop the granular sludge into our EFC well uh, we take a, a volume, a certain volume from an existing EFC, and then we inoculate this uh, uh, granular sludge in the new reactor. Uh, when we uh, start with the, with this new reactor, we feed it with a reduced COD load. Then the granular sludge will grow, and in uh, from uh, 30 to 60 days, the ground sludge will grow to the project level. So uh, we simply take a portion of ground sludge from an existing plant and we transfer it to the new plant. Okay, uh, I'm going through. Uh, and uh, again, again, sorry. Again, uh, uh, an answer, uh, a question related to secondary sludge. Uh, uh, maybe uh, it, was it was already answered, but I repeat that the secondary sludge goes to the digester. So maybe it was missing someone. Uh, okay, Alessandro, sorry. Yeah, uh, feed with fats and proteins in feeds. Does nitrogen and ammonia convert to gaseous uh, nitrogen? No, not to gaseous nitrogen, only to ammonia. All the, uh, the TKN, all the nitrogen contained in the feed will, will, will be transformed into ammonia. Yeah, and this is why mm, if we speak of the STR reactor, for example, for, for uh, slaughter houses or fish, also fishery companies, uh, the, the, then after the dewatering of the digestate, we usually have to aerobically fit aerobically the liquid fraction because the ammonia is still in the in the liquid fraction of the dewatering system. Uh, what are the controls used for the anaerobic digestion? Is H2S analyzer required? Why? Well, uh, controls. There are some. All the plant is. Uh, remotely uh, controlled and can be uh, managed from uh, from uh, PC and so on. Uh, is H2S analyzer required? Uh, well, H2S uh, is uh, for sure a problem, let's say, 
because it's, it is part of biogas. It, the concentration depends on the uh, sulfate content in, 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 uh, in the entering uh, in the entering influent, uh, and H2S is a problem for uh, the final user, that be the boiler or the CHP, or also the uh, upgrading uh, to biomethane system. So uh, the analyzer is important, and also it is also important the uh, H2S treatment. So it depends on the on the concentration. There are many. Uh, different uh, way to remove H2S. H2S has solutions for H2S removal, but it is important to reduce to reduce H2S content from the bio. It's interesting the question: uh, What makes the fluence anaerobic digestion methane gas collector different from the USB methane yeah. gas collection? Uh, well, in our reactor, uh, the gas holder is above the digester, so uh, we have a footprint saving because we don't need a gas holder, an external gas holder. And this uh, solution is also cheaper because if we cover the upper part with the gasometric cover, we don't need a metallic or uh, concrete cover that uh, is quite expensive because it is a, a, co a cover that is impression. Yeah. Uh, I'm going again through the, the questions. There are still um, number of questions to be answered. And uh, how is uh, interesting? How is the performing the, the anaerobic process with brewery wastewater byproduct like starch? Uh, Alessandro, you can answer, but anyway, starch it can be treated as a sludge, let's say. So the solution it is it's a, a CSTR reactor, and starches are, are have uh, a very interesting biogas potential biogas. Uh, production. Yeah, uh, if you are talking about uh, uh, diluted starches, starches diluting the water, uh, EFC is the best solution. If you are talking about uh, concentrated starches or even other uh, brewery waste, uh, brewery byproduct like the exhausted uh, yield, uh, the CSTR, CSTR reactor is the best option. Uh, by the way, in our uh, brewery plants, we have both reactor EFC for the soluble COD and the CSTR for the solid byproduct, primary sludge, uh, concentrated starches, etc. Uh, do you need to do pH ad ad adjustment neutralization of wastewater? It depends. Uh, sometimes it can be it can be needed, of course. And another question related to chemicals: uh, Does food and beverage effluents typically contain enough micronutrients, or do, you, do we have to add such? Also, in this case, it depends. Uh, in some cases, we need to add some uh, some nutrients to adjust the. The, the, the feed to the anaerobic reactor, uh, but I would say that this, uh, when I was saying before that uh, the ROI, the return of investment, usually is three, four years, uh, this uh, evaluation is uh, including also the chemical needed for, for the plants. So uh, I would say that this, this is not affecting the uh, the final balance of the of the of the, of the plan of the of the business and the, and the business plan. There are limits for chlorine and sulfate in EFC and CSTR digester. Uh, well, yes, and uh, uh, Alessandro can be more uh, detailed regarding 
this topic. But yeah, uh, talking about uh, chlorides, the limit is more or less 6,000 milligrams per liter. Uh, regarding the sulfate, uh, we are talking of uh, um, 800 milligrams per liter. Uh, the problem of the sulfate is, uh, for example, uh, even with uh, 100 milligram per liter of sulfate in the incoming wastewater, we will generate a biogas with uh, 5,000 5, ppm of HUS into the biogas. So the limit of the sulfate is, is not only the sulfate itself, but a biogas uh, very, very rich in uh, HUS, so very corrosive. But uh, only for the bio from a biological point of view, we should consider 6,000 milligram per liter for the chlorides and uh, six, eight hundred milligram per liter for the sulfate. Yeah, and uh, sorry, um, an Arabic digestion good solution for high seasonal demand? The answer is no. I mean, uh, well, it could be, but if we are speaking, if, if you are talking of uh, seasonal production, like uh, uh, distilleries in some cases, or like uh, uh, I would say in Italy, uh, wineries, or uh, also um, tomatoes processing companies, uh, when, when you don't have the peak of production, the seasonal production, then you don't have the feed for the, for the reactor. So you have to consider that uh, every season you have to restart uh, at the end of the season. You have to, uh, let's say, freeze your reactor. And at the beginning of the season, you have to restart the reactor. So it could be uh, an expensive solution. In terms of process, it, it could work. In terms of uh, efficiency, of the of the of the process and of the business plan, it, it could could be not the best the best solution. And uh, an interesting uh, question regarding temperature, uh, environmental temperature uh, to uh, applicate this in wastewater treatment. I think that this question is related to the temperature uh, of the reactor. Uh, usually, the reactor, uh, depending on the kind of reactors are operated uh, from 30, 35 degrees up to 50 degrees, uh, depending on which kind of uh, uh, bacteria and process, anaerobic process we want to develop into the reactor. So uh, we need thermal power for sure, uh, that can come from the biogas itself. Uh, if the water is cold, uh, because come because the water the wastewater comes from a, a, a cold process of the company uh, we can consider to reheat the wastewater before entering uh, the reactor and also recover by the recovering of thermal power from the outcoming digested outcoming wastewater uh, of uh, on the reactor so uh, we try uh, to optimize the energy balance, but yes, we need um, temperature and we need to maintain a certain temperature into the reactor. Maybe you noticed that the reactor has a uh, steel plate all around the, 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 the body and this steel plate covers uh, a thermal insulation that allows the, the maintain the, 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 the temperature uh, maintainment into the, re the reactor. Uh, do you add catalyst in the reactor? Well, uh, catalyst micronutrients we already uh, answered, uh, depends on the kind of wastewater. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, uh, isn't an aerobic digester more expensive than aerobic system in terms of capex because of the controls? Well, of course, uh, anaerobic reactors, anaerobic plants have a capex, but again, uh, considering all the factors of the of, uh, costs and benefits related to combination of anaerobic and aerobic 
compared to a solution without anaerobic uh, reactor. The, the anaerobic solution, the, the solution with anaerobic treatment is way more efficient in many, many, for, for many uh, factors. So uh, the capex maybe could be higher, but it, uh, in this case, you have uh, a benefit and the plant is paying itself and then after the, the plant was paid thanks to the uh, benefits related to the anaerobic treatment, the plant is producing money, let's say, or paying some other costs. Uh, if you have only aerobic treatment, you have only costs. So this is the main difference. Okay, so... Uh, uh, well most of the uh, the questions were uh, how long does it take to start up the anaerobic reactor well uh, also this depends on the kind of reactor but uh, we are talking about uh, the weeks so two or three weeks uh, and uh, with having uh, a, a, a seeding sludge so uh, anaerobic sludge coming from another plant uh, active already active or similar let's say uh, byproducts similar to seeding slash example uh, if we are speaking of uh, agricultural plant it use also uh, manure uh, that is helping the startup otherwise it could take longer so uh, I would say that most of the uh, answers were, uh, questions were answered. Uh, I don't know, Alessandro, if you see something else. Mm, no. Uh, well, uh, we already discussed of the micronutrients. Micronutrients is yeah. a recurring question, but uh, we already answered it. Mm. Oh well, uh, last last uh, I will say last uh, answer. Uh, there's a last question. Uh, interesting. How do you recycle the sludge in a digester? Do you settle the sludge? Uh, well, concentrate the sludge more than settling it. But uh, yeah, we we operate uh, a separation from of the sludge of the outcoming sludge of the outcoming state. Uh, from the uh, or the sludge from the digestate, so that we can recirculate part of that into the reactor, giving uh, increasing the anaerobic uh, uh, bacteria concentration into the reactor. So there is a separation uh, of the sludge after the the uh, anaerobic reactor. So um, I would say that we. Uh, ended our time, and uh, I I say thank thanks to you to here, and uh, I invite you to get in touch with us uh, for any any uh, potential doubt or clarification related to this topic, or also for other other water and wastewater uh, treatment issue for uh, industries. Thanks again. And uh, I don't know what to say. Have a nice day. Have a good night. Depend, it depends on where are you connected uh, to this webinar. Thanks and goodbye. Bye.